true and every man a liar. My friend, if you and I have a different opinion from what God's Word says, we are wrong and God is right. God's Word is right and we are wrong if we disagree with what God's Word says. God says it's a man and a woman in marriage. That is the love of God. That is the wisdom of God. And God's love is available to you and me today. But we must repent of our sin. We must repent of our rebellion against God. We must repent of going our own way. Living in sin perhaps. Living in sin today. Don't do it my friend. Repent. Turn away from living in sin. Living in sin will have terrible consequences. It will damn your soul to hell if you stay in it. But you can repent, my friend. You can turn from sin today. You can say no to sin. You can say no to living in sin. You can say yes to God's way. You can say yes to the right way. Oh, there's a way that seems right to a man and a woman. But the ends of those ways are the ways of death. God knows the right way. God, in, God created us. He knows what is best for us. He knows what we need better than we know ourselves. My friend, we need to have our souls saved. And when you have your soul saved, your whole life changes. Your body comes under control. Your body comes under the control of the Holy Spirit. You begin to live the way God intends you to live. Not as an atheist, not as a fool. Not going that way that you think is right, but going God's way. Oh, thank God every Christian turns away from his or her way and goes God's way. God's way is the way of truth. God's God is the way of absolute truth, of absolute right and wrong. God's way is the way of salvation. God's way is the way of blessing. God's way is the way of defeating sin through Jesus Christ. How many of you today are living God's way? Are you living God's way or are you living your own way? Are you living for Jesus or are you living for yourself? Oh, my friend, to live for yourself is to be carnally minded, which is spiritual death. Is it worth it? Is that drunkenness worth it? Is that living in sin with someone who's not your husband or wife, is that worth it? Is redefining marriage worth it? Oh, my friend, you may say it is. But God's word says no. There is a way that seems right to a man. And we say this in love. The state has done nothing for your soul. The state has helped to condemn your soul. But we tell you in love today that God has a way for you and I to live that will see you eternally saved. That will see you eternally delivered from your sin and the consequences of sin. Yeah, you can go the way that society says is right, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Oh, my friend, I love the Word of God. I love the commandments of God. I love living the way God intends for me. Because when I live the way God intends for me to live, I'm blessed in my soul. I have peace in my soul. I can have no money. I can have no friends. But my friend, when I am living the way God wants me to live, I have true peace. I have true joy in my soul. I have true satisfaction in my soul. Because I know I'm right with God. I know I'm not going to go to hell when I die. I know that I'm going to be with Jesus and all his followers forever. My friend, are you living your own way today? The way of evolution? Evolution's a lie. Evolution's just a lie for grown-ups who don't want to be morally accountable. Evolution is just for those who prefer their own human wisdom rather than divine revelation. Oh, my friend, evolution's bankrupt. Many of the scientists know evolution's bankrupt. Some of the scientists now in America, they're spending millions of dollars to send probes into outer space looking for signs of life looking for anything or anyone to put their trust in rather than the God of the Bible. My friend, as I look round today, I see a society that is morally bankrupt, a society morally and socially bankrupt, and I see the utter faithfulness of God. 
I see that God is so faithful. I see that God is so kind to you today, people. God is still willing to send preachers to reason with you. Though many of you, your consciences are seared. Though many of you, it's too late for you. God is still willing to reason to show that the fault is on your side and not on God's side. My friend, if you end up in hell, it's not God's fault. It's your own fault. God has made a way for you and I to escape. He has made a way for you and I to get to heaven through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the precious blood that Jesus spilt upon the cross, through that blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through the redemption that Jesus accomplished at the cross. God has made a way for you and me back from hell. He's made a way back for us if we will take it while we live. But my friend, if you die in your sin, there is no other alternative for you but hell, my friend. I say that lovingly. We don't want you to die in your sin. We don't want you to perish in your sin. God loves the world. God loves sinners. That means you and I. But my friend, you must obey the gospel. You must repent. You must agree with God that the way you're living is wrong. 27 years ago, I agreed with God. The way I was living was wrong. My drunkenness was wrong. My immorality was wrong. I had to agree with God that he was right and is right and I was and I'm wrong. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is death. Oh, we're living in sin. Oh, we're getting a mortgage, you say. Oh, we live in the same house. No, my friend, you're condemning each other. You're sending each other to hell. You're sinning against each other's bodies. God says it's marriage only. Living in sin will condemn you, young people. Living in sin will condemn you, older people. And we tell you that because we love you. You may have already decided to go to hell, but we plead with you to think again. Repent. It's not worth it. Whatever sin you're engaging in today, we tell you it's not worth it. Once God's judgments begin, there'll be no stopping them. This world hasn't seen anything yet. A few hurricanes, a few bits of famine. It's nothing. God is going to destroy this world. God is going to send his final plagues of judgment upon the world. My friend, if you've ever made something, you have the right to destroy it. If I make a clay model, I have the right to destroy it. My friends... God made the universe. God made humanity. God can do with humanity what he wills because he is God. Perhaps the worst sin of all is atheism. The worst sin of all to say there's no God. And yet when my brother was preaching, how ironic. When people die and get buried, what do they do? They lie face up. They lie face up in their coffins. If they will not look at God in life, God will make you face him in death. You will lie in your coffin looking up, looking up towards the sky, looking up to that place where Jesus Christ is returning from to judge the world in righteousness. Oh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God's not dead. He's alive. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. Every Christian is proof. We have proof today that Jesus is alive. Why? Woo! Because he's changed our lives. Yes. If Jesus was not alive, I would be down the pub just now. I would be getting drunk this afternoon. No, I'm not going there. I've got the Holy Spirit. Woo I drink of the Holy Spirit, my friend, now. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm so happy. Because God has made me holy. Because God has cleansed me. He's shown me what life is all about. He's shown me there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end of that way is death. He's shown me the way of life. He's shown me the way of everlasting life. The way of faithfulness. I don't need to live in sin anymore. I've got a good marriage. I don't need weekend visiting rights because I've got children inside a marriage my children stay with me every night 
because they stay with my wife every night, because we're married for life. Oh, what confusion at the weekends nowadays, with all this matrimonial confusion, all this going to be with the stepdad and the stepmom and his stepchildren and her stepchildren and their children and their stepchildren. Oh, my friend, what a terrible situation. Our society is almost destroyed because of sexual immorality. And we say this in love. God is the one who invented the marriage bed. God gave that gift. But my friend, you've stolen it. It's a stolen pleasure to many of you. It's become a sinful pleasure. Your bed that you share is unclean. It's morally unclean, my friend. But God wants to give you a clean marital bed. God wants to give you a pure life through the blood of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave to you, my friend, but your rejection is culpable. Your rejection, my friend, is real. Your rejection is, is very, very damning to your own soul, my friend. You'll have to pay for your drunkenness. I was going to have to pay for my drunkenness myself. I was drunk every weekend for years as a teenager. And I was going to have to pay for that. I was going to have to pay for my drunkenness. My drunkenness at the weekend was out of control. Oh, my friend, I was in trouble with God. I was in a mess in my life. I had two choices. I could stay the way I was in my drunkenness, in my fornication. I could stay that way and I could say no to God. I could say no to Jesus. I could say, Jesus, leave me alone. But by God's mercy, I was enabled to repent. And my friend, you need that mercy of God today, not just to keep you alive. My friend, the fact that you and I are not in hell today is a sign of God's mercy to us. But you don't just need the mercy of God, you need the grace of God. You need to get what you don't deserve. You need that grace of God that brings salvation to us. The grace of God in Jesus Christ. The grace of God of Calvary. The grace and love of God that brings salvation to your soul. That sees you turned away from hell. That sees you turn towards heaven. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad that I'm a child of God. You wouldn't be able to change my mind today with all the money in the world. The devil took Jesus to a high mountain. He said, Jesus, worship me and you can have worldly glory. Why would Jesus want that when he can have eternal glory? When he can have heavenly glory? When he can have the glory in the new heavens and new earth? But most of you fall for that lie of the devil today. The devil says, here's a bit of stolen pleasure. Here's a bit of adultery. Here's a bit of fornication. Here's a bit of living in sin. Here's a bit of the national lottery. Here's a little bit of covetousness. Here's a little bit of someone else's husband or wife. But then you have to pay for that for all eternity. Then you have to pay for that sin for all eternity. God showed King David that sin has consequences. David committed sin. David committed adultery. And God showed him there was consequences. David and his family were plagued for the rest of their lives. Oh, my friend, don't. Don't give in to sin. Say no to sin. Don't give in to adultery. If that man or woman says, come and live with me, say no. If you love me, you'll buy me a wedding ring. If you love me, you'll make me your wife. You'll promise to share everything you have with me. But no, my friend, it's a mess. Our society is in a mess. It's in a mess because of sexual impurity. As the Bible says, every man need, every man lusted after his neighbor's wife. We are in a day of uncontrolled sexual immorality. We are in a day of uncontrolled immorality. And it's leading our nation to hell. 
It's leading our nation to hell faster than you can say ABC. My friend, don't die an atheist. See that the love of God that he's allowed you to come to this point in your life, that he's giving you a second chance. That he's giving you a second chance to see the error of your ways. To see, my friend, what's that? Yeah, he does. You haven't asked. You've got to ask. You made that up. You've got to ask God to help you. You perhaps didn't ask enough. My friend, you've sometimes got to ask. God wants to see if you're serious. God wants to see if you and I will be humble. God's not going to impart his gifts to us if we are proud. If we think it, God's not a social worker. God's not the welfare state. God's not just a sugar daddy. God is a holy God who gives good gifts to those who ask him sincerely. You and I have got to plead with God. God tests us. God has got the right to test us to see if we really have faith. Most of you just don't have faith. You don't have the faith to believe. You're faithless. Jesus says, be not faithless but believing. God has tested you and found you wanting. God has tested you and shown you don't have faith. God has tested you and found you faithless. You'd rather believe the lie of evolution. We're not going to be long, man. Five minutes will be done. Five minutes. A few minutes, yeah. yeah. That's a bit better now, yeah. Oh, my friend, I tell you today, don't give in to the lie of evolution. Don't give in to the devil's lie that there's no God. That is perhaps the worst sin of all to say there's no God. My friend, you and I wouldn't even be here today if there wasn't a God. You wouldn't even be able to have a meaningful conversation if God didn't exist. Oh, don't be a foolish person. Don't be a foolish atheist, my friend. Atheism isn't wise. Really, my friend, to be an atheist is to make yourself God. You've decided to be God of your own universe. That's what a guy says to me. He says, I am the God of my own universe. In other words, he's God to himself. No, my friend, there's only one God. He is the God of the Bible. He is the God and Father of Jesus Christ. He is the true God. You say, I don't believe in any gods. Well, you've missed the real God. Just because, my friend, there is a, a counterfeit five-pound note, repent, sinner, repent of your sin, repent of your unbelief. Your lifestyle isn't a good example for, for, for rejection of God. One of the sad things. Come on, sir, come on. Don't just be a hit and run. Come on. Have the courage of your conviction, sir. Sir, I didn't even hear what you said. Sir, I didn't even hear what you said, sir. But you see, they won't come back. They won't come back and talk. Because they don't have an argument against God. They can't stand against God now. So how can they stand against Him on the Day of Judgment? If you can't have a successful argument that will stand against God today, how do you think you'll stand on the Day of Judgment, my friend? You won't. You see, there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end of that way is the way of death. Oh, my friend, God loves you today. God sent his son to die for you. God sent Jesus to bleed and die on that cross so that you can be forgiven, so that you can escape hell, so that you can have a pure life today. Give up, my friend, your sin. Turn from your sin. Repent and believe the good news of the gospel. Whatever your sin is, my friend, turn away from it today. Turn away from your sin. Believe that God loves you. Believe that God has the right way through the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my friend, God loves you and I enough to send Jesus to die for us. But, my friend, if you and I end up in hell, it's our own fault. We've rejected the full revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Don't do that, my friend. Don't die in your sin. Don't die a sinner, my friend. Die a saint. The Bible actually calls Christians saints. 
Even many Christians feel uncomfortable with that label. But we are all saints. I, the Bible doesn't class me anymore as a sinner. He classes me according to my new identity. That I am made righteous in Christ. That I have a new nature. That I have a faith that overcomes the world, the flesh and the devil. My friend, what nature are you living in today? Are you living in that old sinful nature? Or are you living in that new nature which is through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. God so loved the world. Oh, I see such hardness of heart today when I look round. If you were to ask me, preacher, well, what is the summary, preacher, of what you see today? I would say it's hardness of heart. Oh, my friend, repent of your hardness of heart. Repent of your hatred against God. Repent of your disobedience. Repent of your selfishness. Repent, repent of your sin, dear friend, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the ends of those ways are the ways of death. 